Здравейте и ви сте с новия епизод на Даскова по музика и музикална училищна телевизия MUTV и наш гост е Бил Маклинтък от Америка. Hi Bill, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having thank me. You. Thank you for being part of our show. Uh, you see, uh, my kids a uh, member of, uh, we got uh, music school television and some of them are also playing in a school band. Oh, uh, nice. School rock band, yes. Very so, cool. <laughs> can, you, can you tell us who are you? What are you doing? Where are you living? Okay, so you guys, you know me from my mashups that I do. Um, and I'm also a music teacher. I teach uh, in, a, in an elementary school. So I have kids from first grade through sixth grade. And uh, I actually started at a new school this year. And uh, it's a public school close to where I live. So, and it's going well. You know, I, I like teaching the kids. Um, now, as far as the mashups that I do, I've been doing those for about three years now. I started in, what, 2017, I guess, I started making them. Um, and it was something, I, I do have a, a background in music technology as well. I went to, to school, college, for music um, technology uh, about going on 20 years ago, I guess that was now. Yeah, so, and then I went later for music education and decided to be a, a music teacher. Um, but so, you know, I do have the background in technology and I, I um, when I was studying, I learned how to put things together in uh, different programs, similar to GarageBand, where you can see, you know, the different tracks and things like that. So, you know, and I, I, I had heard other people do mashups before, you know, and they've been doing them. I've, I've seen them on YouTube for the past 10 years, you know, and, and just one day decided that was something I'd like to try to do. I, I'm a guitar player myself. I've been playing guitar for a long time. Um, I always liked, you know, rock music was always my thing. I studied jazz when I was in, when I was at school, but you know, I, I, I grew up on, on rock and roll. I loved eighties rock, you know, Van Halen, Motley Crue, um, you know, all those kinds of things. Those are all my, all my favorites. So, but the, you know, the, the mashup thing just always, it, it just appealed to me. I wanted to try to make something that was, new but using familiar material so two songs that people would know you know really popular songs but you know put them together to try to create something new and something like wow i can't believe those two songs actually go together you know and that that's what i like to do is just get that reaction from people like how that how do you do this you know how do you how do you find these two songs that work together this is just blowing my mind you know kind of thing so yeah you know, that's that's basically what i do can I can I get a little personal questions? Uh, it's uh, it's about your teaching actually because I'm teaching from uh, fifth to seventh grade music in a public school. It's not a music school. Uh, what what uh, I, I'm interested in these uh, classes fifth, sixth, uh, seventh grade. What 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 material you are uh, uh, teaching? What what kind of uh, uh, history of music or rock or what are you teaching them? Yeah, well, it's for, for the older the kids, yeah. for like for the upper elementary kids that I have, and the the one building that I'm in is fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. And before I started, they didn't have much of a a foundation in music from the the teacher that was teaching before I was. So a lot of what I was teaching are, are some of the fundamentals. So learning um, 
notes on the treble clef staff. You know, they learn EGBDF and FACE, those kinds of things. They learn how to read rhythms, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note rhythms. I have flashcards that I use to teach them that, so they can they can speak the rhythms, um, those kinds of things. And we, I actually got some ukuleles for them. I uh, through a for donors choose. I was able to get a, a whole class set. I have twenty five ukuleles in the classroom that the kids play. And they, they really like that because a lot of them, they haven't had that kind of thing before. They haven't done any music, um, any instruments. So to, to introduce that to them was really cool because I, I, I got a lot of enthusiasm out of them and they, they really seem to enjoy that. And then we also play, um, I don't know if you know what boom whackers are, those like colored tubes that each have different pitches. So you picture like a, um, like a paper towel roll kind of a thing, like a tube, you know, and they come in different colors and different lengths. So they all have different pitches. And then I have some um, play along things that I found on YouTube where they can, uh, where I, I play the music and it tells them which note to play at which time, you know, and so they take turns playing their, their tube at the right time to, to make a song. And they, you know, they really enjoy doing that too. So those are a lot of, a lot of things that I do. So Georin, actually, you're also playing, which is kind of difficult here for us. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I even don't get a, a, a music room, you know. Oh. So I'm just uh, walking around in the different... I, yeah, I've done yes. that before. I mean, I had a few... Um, the, my, my very first teaching job, which was almost, ten, I guess, nine years ago, it was the same situation. It was a it was a long term sub position, so I was I was just filling in for the teacher for the rest of the year, and that was a room to room thing too, where I would just have to go from class to class. That's hard. <laughs> it is That's hard. To it do. is. <laughs> but but when you start playing uh, music with the kids, uh, they enjoy it. Yeah, it, it's a a big plus for them. It is to 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 play music, yes. not only to listen or to sing. Also to play, yeah, and that's that's what I think. You know, I've always been more hands-on, and I and I know the kids really enjoy that. So I do as much, and, and just to keep them engaged too, because I feel you know if I'm up there, if I'm just talking the whole time, they're they're not going to pay attention. They're gonna <laughs> they're gonna misbehave and everything else. So I try to keep them engaged as much as I can. Okay, let's let's talk about uh, your mashups. How are you doing? But uh, anybody got any questions? To build? I, I have questions, but they're um, after you discuss the mashups. I will ask my questions after you discuss the mashups. Okay. okay. I know just... So, how much time it takes to create a single mashup? I get asked that a lot. Um, it's, it's hard to say because I, I don't really keep track of the time. I get so into it that I, I just don't think about anything else. You know, if I <laughs> if I have the time, during, and, I, and now I've had nothing but time, you know, being on lockdown, so I've had a lot of time to, to kind of think and, and put them together. But the estimate I tell people is usually between 15 and 20 hours is about how long it takes. Now that's when I that's after I have the idea. Once I have the idea. I'll sit down and I'll I'll put start putting things together and and if I, I like it then I'll just I'll absolutely keep going and you get you get that feeling you know like when, once I start putting it together I'm like oh this is so cool like I can't I can't wait to do this one you know and that's at the point where I'll start doing them but a lot of times that doesn't happen I'll I'll think okay this is a really cool idea this is going to work you know I can't wait to do this and then I start doing it and I'm like nah not so good. So I, I'll throw that out and, and start over again. But once I, I find a combination that I really like, then I'm, you know, 15, 20 hours. A lot, of, a lot of that time is spent just listening to what I've done so far. So if I've done, you know, a minute's worth of music, I'll just listen over and over and over because I'm, I, you know, this is, this is really cool. And it's, it's hard to, to keep going at that because I, I want to listen to what I have. But, you know, and, and and part of that process too is thinking, well, what's going to come next? You know, from the the form of the music. So I have the intro, I have the verse. Now, how am I going to put a chorus together? Second verse. I add a lot of guitar solos to it. You know, just uh, 
random rock players or heavy metal players where the 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 guitar solo will sync up with the music you know it'll be in the same key same tempo and and i'll put that together so that's always kind of been my thing too and then i'll think usually of, of some kind of a an outro where i have a lot of call and response you know so the the one group the one band will be singing followed by the other back and forth kind of a thing you know and i i do um, this is kind of going beyond what your question was, but um, I do. Okay, I do have um, a background in uh, arranging too. You know, jazz arranging. That was one thing that I studied when I was in school, and you know, we learned how to write for fourteen horns. So it would be you know five trumpets, five trombone, or no, five trumpets, five saxophones, four trombones. You know, and and how to to write with a melody, all the other instruments harmonize, that kind of thing. Now, what I do isn't nearly as complicated as, as all that, but I get, what I took from studying ar arranging is just how, how to space things, I guess you could say. Yep. So I have this idea have, happening here, and then the next idea is going to start, and to, to make things happen to where they don't overlap. So, you know, one vocal phrase will end here, then there will be some kind of a little instrumental thing, another vocal phrase, so that they they sit really well together, you know. So then I think that I I've listened to a lot of other mashup artists and and a lot of them don't really do that, and I think that that's something that that people don't really know about that I that I kind of that I think of through my process, and and something that um, you know makes them work as well as they do. How you choose the songs? Are you listening by the by the tune by the the, the same tune G C D or yes? Or, or, or you are transporting them? No, you you are on the original tune. It's well, it depends. You, I mean, the 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 place where I start is always key and tempo. You know, so if I have, if I find, and by the way, I, a lot of people ask me this too. Um, they ask how I isolate the tracks, how I have just the vocal track. How I have just the instrumental, or just the guitar, or just the drums, and I I don't do that. I don't isolate anything. Everything that I that I use, I find somewhere. So I can mm -hmm. I can find them on YouTube by searching for um, whatever the A song capella. is, vocals only, you know, yeah. or instrumental version. So I I find those things already in place. And I, as far as I know, they they just come right from the studio. I don't know how they get from the recording studio master master tapes. To YouTube, but that, but I find them, and there's you know, other websites as well where I can find them. But you know, so I don't isolate anything. But as far as figuring out which songs go together, if I have a song, you know, an isolated vocal that's in C minor, for example, I'll have to try to find a matching instrumental that's also in C minor. Now, if I don't, if I find one in B minor, that's close. So I I can use my software to either move the vocal down a half step or move the instrumental up a half step if that makes sense so that they're so that they're in the same key and then they have to be close to the same tempo as well um so if there's something close you know 120 beats per minute the other you know the vocal is 120 beats per minute instrumental is 115 beats per minute then i can take that instrumental and slow it down just enough so that so that it's in time with the instrumental but, and it's, it's not just about key and tempo. A lot of people will, will comment, you know, I, I get mostly positive comments on my channel, which is nice, but sometimes there's, you know, there's always people who are negative and are, are trolls or whatever, which, which you get, but they say things like, oh, you know, this, this isn't a big deal. All you have to do is match two songs together that are the same key and tempo. Well, no, it's more complicated than that, you know, because you could, you could have two songs that, that are the same key and tempo, but, yeah, the, the vocal phrases are different lengths, or there's different things happening instrumentally here that, that don't work with the vocals. You know, so if you have, you know, 100 different combinations of songs that are in the same key and tempo, maybe one combination out of those 100 will actually work and, and sound really good. And that's part of the process, and it, it takes, that takes longer than, than actually sequencing them and doing them with my computer, finding the idea, takes a long time. And the, the one that I just did most recently, I don't know if you heard, it was, I just put it up a couple days ago. Chick. What's that? With Iron Man. 
Yes, Sheik, the Iron the Maiden and, and Sheik. And I, I spent probably three days before I came up with that combination, just, you know, sitting on my phone, trying to find anything that would work together. And the, the Sheik one is one that I had to find a different website. The, the isolated vocal wasn't on YouTube. So I found it, and it was actually seven different tracks of just vocals, which was really cool to, to layer those together. And then I, I had a, a lot of options that I could do where I could change one of the harmonies if I needed to, since it was on a separate track. And I could make it so that, so that it would fit. Um, but, and that was one, like once I, once I had that idea and I started to put it together, I thought, wow, this is, this is a good one. This is cool, I wanna, I wanna do this one. So that's kinda how that, whole thing happen. I gotta tell you, uh, I I got this Michael Jackson and Eric Clifton, your second mashup, because I, I sometimes, well, I've been doing DJing and I've been using that mashup a lot. Oh, that's great. Your second mashup, yeah. That was one that, that I did, yeah, it was, it was a long time ago when I did that one. I know. Um, I had done, it was a few, it was a few, I don't think it was the second one I did, there was a, there were a few I did before that, but um, that one, it was weird because a lot of times when I'm keeping track of the views that they have, that one was really steady, you know, from the beginning it was just kind of, there was never a huge jump where there were like, you know, hundreds of thousands of views in a couple of days, it never did that, it was just real steady and I think it's like maybe 1.6 million views now, but the one, the first one that I that I that got a ton of views right away was the um, the Marvin Gaye and Rat one. If you heard that one, that one was yeah. the one that kind of put me on the map. You know, they that you know b before that time, before I made that one, I I had um, I had fifty subscribers on my channel, and I had been making them. That was like the the Marvin Gaye and Rat one was probably I think around the twentieth one that I did. So I did a bunch before I did that. But all, through all of those, I, I only had 50 subscribers. And then, you know, that one happened. And then within a couple of days, I had a thousand subscribers. And then I did a, another one not long after that. It was um, Slayer and George Michael, <laughs> which <laughs> is not, it's actually not on my channel anymore because it, it was removed. It's the only video I've ever done that was removed. Sometimes they're blocked and I have to try to get them unblocked if I can because, you know, all the music I use is copyrighted. So the artists yeah, who own the rights to those songs are able to say, you know, I don't, or it might not, not even be the artists, it might be the record companies. They say they don't, they don't want that on there, so they, you know, they'll block it. But the, the Slayer and George Michael one was taken down and I got a copyright strike for that one too, which is bad. You don't want copyright strikes. Because if you get three of them, then they, they take down your channel. Dick YouTube yeah. will, will terminate your channel. But after... I think it's after 90 days, then the copyright strike goes away. So, right now my channel's clean. I don't have any, I don't have any <laughs> strikes on it. <laughs> that was actually my next question: is How are you doing with the copyrights? Because sometimes I'm I'm making video lessons for the kids. Uh, for instance, the last one was the pop music, and there was my Sharona, and there was Adele, you know, and they were just no, they was muted. And I, I I wrote to Sony, and it was okay. Well, just uh, I'm using twenty seconds or something, thirty seconds. Okay. Not yeah. And that happens. And when I set up my channel, I was given the option to to have ads on it. And because because I run ads on my channel, then I. I rarely run into any kind of copyright issues. I always get a, a notification from YouTube saying that I'm I'm using copyrighted material, but because of the fact that I'm I'm running ads, 
all the money that's generated goes to the record companies, you know. So I, I don't make a dime. YouTube doesn't, doesn't give me anything. But you are getting very famous worldwide. It, yeah, yeah, I'm getting you you know, a lot of views, which is nice. And the, the one that I did, <laughs> uh, it was over Christmas. It was the, the Marilyn Manson and Mariah Carey one. That was the one that had the, the most views. And that one, I've never seen, it, I've never had a video take off like that. It was um, within three days, it had a million views. And within eight days, it had two million views. So, and I, you know, I think a lot, I mean, a lot of that had to do with the fact that it was Christmas time and it was, it was Christmas music. Um, but it was a funny combination too. It was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your combination was funny. They, they, they all, but, and, and I heard they're, they're playing your mashups on the radio now. Yeah. Yeah. I do. Um, I, I hear people, people will comment on my channel saying that, I, you know, I heard this on this, the, the local radio station where I live, you know, somewhere across the country from where I live. Um, or there's a, there's a, a newscaster who works in Chicago and he's, he, he friended me on Facebook and, um, you know, he, he loves the stuff that I do, but, but he'll, he'll play like little clips of it on, on the, his news show sometimes. And then I'll get people comment, commenting on my channel, like, oh, I saw this on the, the morning news in Chicago this morning, <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, that, that's really cool. I, yeah. I like the fact that people enjoy it and they, you know, it gives me a reason to do it. And like I, like I said, I did, you know, 20 mashups when I, I had no subscribers. I only had 50 subscribers, but I still liked it enough that, you know, I want to keep doing these because I thought maybe someday some, you know, one of them will take off and, and uh, you know, a lot of people will be into it. And, you know, that was, what, two two years ago, a little more than two years ago when it really, it, it started to really take off. And now it's um, 126,000 subscribers I have now. Yeah, you got is, a lot. I saw awesome. it last night. I got your uh, all mashups here, 70 something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Something else, how you fix it? You, you, you first make the audio and then the video or you make it both together? It's always the audio first and the audio takes the longest. Um, that, that takes a long time to put together because I, you know, I listen to it so many times and I, I feel like I have to listen to it about a hundred times at least because after that many listens, there will be something that I heard, some, some little imperfection that I never noticed, you know, I had to listen to it so many times. And then also, you know, take a break for a while, come back a few hours later, and then there might be something that I, I hadn't heard, you know, like, oh, this, there's a little mistake here in the audio where I have to fix it. Um, but the, yeah, all the audio's 100% done first. Then once I, I do that, I, I bounce the audio to an AIFF file, and then I, I, um, import that into iMovie to do the video. So then for the video part, I'll, I'll go on YouTube again and I'll, I'll download video clips that I need, but then once I, I import those video clips and, and start splicing them together, all the audio is taken out of the video clips themselves. So the only audio you're hearing is, is what I did with Logic Pro X, and then it's just the, the, the video clips layered on top of that. And that I can usually do, the video part, I can usually do that in one sitting, two, three hours. I can get that done. So the majority of it is, is definitely the audio. Okay, uh, first nice to meet you. Thank you, nice and to meet you. I have a few questions, but I will start with the more, uh, most important. It's uh, a little bit beyond the mashups, it's uh, a music at all. So, um, I'm a musician and let's say that I've just graduated university and I have a bachelor degree in music and my colleagues and of course me decide to form a band. So we find manager and stuff that we need to start a band, we record our first album and start uh, playing shows in um, in our town, in different clubs. So my question is, uh, can I lead a normal lifestyle 
uh, with average uh, for your country incomes as a club musician? Yes, it, it depends on on how much, I mean, for where I am, you you have to play a few nights a week, you know, to, to get a, a, enough money, I guess you could say. Um, for me personally, I, I prefer to have a nine to five job, you know, teaching job so that I have that, you know, during the day and not nine to five, but like I'm there, what, seven to three, something like that. And then I come home and then I have my, you know, my own kids and, you know, and I spend time with them. And it, you know, it depends on what you want to do. I mean, there's people who, you know, playing music is your passion. That's what you want to do. That comes first. So you have to build your life around that, if that makes sense. You know, if you're going to be playing out several nights a week, um, yeah, I mean, you, you just, you have to figure out how to, how to form the rest of your life around that, I guess. But yeah, if, if, if you play enough, enough nights and, and you, you become popular enough and you have different clubs who, who want to have your band there all the time, then yeah, you could, I mean, where, where I am in the United States, you can, you can definitely make a living. And I know people who do make their living doing just that. So, sure. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Whoever has questions. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, do you Americans uh, set aside money for art and music because in Bulgaria this, uh, the majority don't pay for uh, music and art? Um, yes, it's, I mean, it, it's definitely something that's valued in our country. Um, unfortunately, not as much as other things. Sports are the biggest in our country, football, hockey, baseball, those things are huge. That's where the majority of the money in our country goes, you know, in, in the different states, the different cities. That's, that's just is, for whatever reason, that's what people value the most. I'm not a sports person, you know, I'm, I'm a music person, and that's not to say you can't be both, but I, I personally don't watch sports, you know, I, I do the music thing. Um, but, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to be in a public school where they do value the arts. They do value um, music and art. And then we have, um, we also have STEAM, which is uh, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. You know, so all of those things are incorporated as a, a separate class uh, where I teach. So, um and, and I think, you know, the, the majority of, of schools throughout our country, they do value those things, which is nice. So, yeah, I hope that answers your question.